Hey, before this video starts, I just have to remind you that we are about to begin the intuitive intensive on January 18th, 2021. Now this is a cutting edge, innovative and truly life shifting spiritual program that has the power to blast open your psychic abilities and literally change your whole life. Check out the link in the description below to find out everything you will learn and how you can join. And also there's a deep early bird discounted price through the month of December. Let's do this. I really want to see you in this program. Let's spend three months together just immersing ourselves in awesome metaphysical content. Are you excited? I know I am. The 2021 Intuitive Intensive is here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's video. I am Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so excited to be here. And I also hope that you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Before we get into the subject of the video, I wanted to encourage those of you who are interested to go to textcac.com. If you're interested in knowing what I'm doing, for example, if I'm going to be going live or if I'm going to be uploading a video or if I'm going to be in the lab or if you're interested in hearing some thoughts from me from time to time, maybe I'm waking up and I've got a great affirmation or I've got a meditation technique or I'm closing out my day with some thoughts. If you are wanting to stay connected to me, then I encourage you to please go to textcac.com and there you'll see a number right there. All you have to do is text that number and you'll be connected. You'll receive texts from me and I'll be able to text all of you. And I also will sometimes just text with you individually if I can. The community is growing quite a bit, but it's just a direct way for us as a community to be together because as social media continues to expand and in my humble opinion, deep in its toxification. It's getting more and more toxic out there in social media. As that happens, it is harder and harder for content creators and for me in particular to just be able to talk to you without getting throttled and without getting disappeared. Like on YouTube, I've been getting disappeared for the last year, which is uh, demotivating to me to even come up and, and share on YouTube because I don't even know if you guys are going to know that I'm here. But if we stay connected through this community, this text community, then you will know what I am doing. So if you're interested, go to textcac.com and go ahead and text that number. I do want to say that this is, I believe, free to those in the USA, although you'll want to make sure with your own rates and your own plans. I, I don't know all about that, but I believe it's free for us in the USA. But if you're not in the USA, you'll definitely want to check your plans and your rates to just make sure because things charges might apply and I'm not sure. Okay. Even for those in the US, just make sure. <laughs> all right. Moving on now, let's go ahead and talk about today's topic. We actually are going to be answering a question from one of our viewers. And the question comes from Von Craig Hughes. Cool name, by the way, Von Craig Hughes. Von Craig Hughes asks, are we all on one journey heading home to the same place or are there several homes? Several homes. Now, I love this question because this can be answered in more than one way. And so I'm going to try and address, I'm going to try and address the potentialities here, but I'm going to start with the answer that applies to us mere mortals, <laughs> mere humans, because as a human here in 3D reality, we are existing on a certain plane. And when we pass away, meaning when our spirit leaves the physical human body, which is tethered to 3D, there's a process that takes place and we all go through it as humans. And so in this way, yes, we are all as humans, we are all going towards the same home. And let me kind of describe to you what that is. When we pass away, when Crystal Ann Compton dies, her physical body is left in 3D, ashes to ashes, back to earth it goes. But the light body or the spirit immediately pops out of 3D and into the fourth dimension. Now, the fourth dimension is a portal dimension, meaning there's a portal like a wormhole. There is an access point right there in 4D that allows us to bop out of 4D and into other dimensional realities. We all hear that when we die, we're going to see a light and we got to go in the light and that's how we go to heaven. The light in this instant is this portal that I'm speaking of. But just so that you know, this portal is not just about 
death and dying. In fact, this portal is accessed by those who are incarnating. So if we have beings that are coming from fifth dimensional reality and incarnating into a life in 3D as a human, they also access that light or that tunnel or that portal. And likewise, we have dimensional beings who share space in our universe who can access 4D to access other spaces, dimensionally speaking, in the universe. So a being from 6D can actually use 4D in order to access 3D and 2D. So it's a multifaceted portal. And I will say, because of this, the nature of fourth dimensional reality is kind of kind of busy. It even can be kind of chaotic. And the fact is that you and I both pop into 4D every single day, at least once a day, and that's when we fall asleep. You see, when we fall asleep, the light body separates from the physical body and moves into fourth dimensional reality, into this kind of transient space where there's a lot going on and a lot of beings are sharing that space. And then from there, we decide to go to whatever universal or dimensional experience we want to have. So that's 4D. We all end up there when we die. And then we enter into that portal, the tunnel of light, if you will. And that takes us directly to 5D. 5D. Now, this is what we would call heaven. And we speak of heaven in these sort of ecstatic terms. It's beauty. There's no judgment there. Well, some some religions believe there's judgment there, but I would offer to you there's there's none of that. There's no need, like we humans need to have judgment and we need to have separation. That doesn't exist in fifth dimensional reality. In fact, it is the dimension of unity consciousness. It is the dimension of there is no you and me, there is we. It all is one. It is the dimension of Christ consciousness and Buddha consciousness, very elevated in vibration. And also soul groups and groups of souls that have things in common, for example, interests and missions also collect here in fifth dimensional reality. Now, when we die, we move through the 4D portal and we get to 5D, we're actually getting to kind of that lower tier of 5D. And I would now offer to you the idea that there are many tiers to every dimension, to include the third dimension. There are many octaves or gradations of frequency. And the way this happens in 5D is we have this lower tier and human souls departing third dimensional reality end up in this lower tier. And there's a lot of things that go on here, but I like to refer to it as kind of processing. Like we got to get processed. And in short, we have to climatize. We have to prepare the light body that we are in to the frequency of fifth dimensional reality. And for some of us, this means that we have a season in 5D where we are healing. Maybe we've had a really hard life here as a human, and maybe we've had illnesses or abuse and trauma. And so there's adjustments that need to take place to our spirit before we can then move freely throughout 5D. Now, the life review that so many of us hear about, this is something that takes place after we die. This tends to, for the most part, happen in 5D, in that lower tier, processing. The soul is getting ready to move in to 5D in fullness. And after this processing takes place, and there's more to it than just climatization, if you will, or the life review, there's more that happens there. But once we go through all of that, we move into the higher levels of 5D reality. And of course, there is no higher and lower. There's no better or, or, or less than in these realities. It's just about frequency and the nature of this frequency. And in 5D, there's so much going on in these higher tiers of frequency. There are choirs of angels. There are schools. There are houses and homes. There are groups of souls doing things. There are access points in 5D that allow souls to access other dimensions to include 3D. And so when we have people like departed loved ones who are giving us messages here in our physical reality, they're doing that from 5D, accessing the portal of 4D. Am I going crazy? Is this too much? <laughs> Get me talking about this stuff, Von Craig Hughes, and I, I have a hard time stopping, but that's how that happens. And from that vantage point in 5D, after we've processed, if you will, we can then kind of move about 
the cabin. We can start moving to the different tiers in 5D and we can also access higher dimensional realities and work with beings from there. So it's fun. It's great. And I would say to you that everybody goes there. Of course, we have doctrine and dogma around hell and punishment and purgatory. And this is not the experience that I have in terms of my connection with spirit and the channeling that I've done. This is not the experience that is relayed to me vis-a-vis -vis conversations with the dearly departed. When people speak about hell, and they speak about purgatory, they speak about having a near-death experience where they had an experience that was very frightful or hellish. What they are describing is experiencing or encountering a dimensional reality that directly mirrored their frequency as a human the moment before they died. So if the moment before you die, you are in a state of confusion or you're in a state of hatred or you've got, you're harboring a lot of anger or you've got a lot of stuff that you are holding within you, you will go to the fourth dimensional reality which will reflect back to you the state of frequency you possessed at the time of your death. You see, the fourth dimensional reality is a thought form reality. And it's it, there's, no, there's no time there like we experience time here. And so you have a thought or you are a thing and it becomes out pictured in the reality in 4D. So if you're a demon of a human in life and you die, you're going to have a somewhat demonic experience in 4D because the signature of who it is that you are is gonna be reflected back to you. But even for those of us who live terrible lives and conduct themselves in terrible ways, even though we find ourselves in a dimension that reflects this back to us and therefore is hellish, demonic, or terrifying, the light always appears. The light always appears and, and further, guides always come to get us. Guides always come to get us and help us into the light. Now, not all souls want to go into the light. That's a whole other conversation we can have at a later time, but the light is available and guides are available to help you through the light. And once you get to the light, and you go to 5D, you're processed, you're adjusted, you're, you're upgraded. Okay, Beyonce, you're upgraded, you're up-leveled, and your consciousness reflects the dimension in which you dwell. And you become aware, oh, wow, I was a hellion on earth. Oh, wow, I missed the mark in all these different ways. And I, therefore, I've got, to, I've got to learn a new way. Maybe I incarnate again, and I try again, and all those things can happen. But in my experience and understanding, there is no hell. There is only that which we are. There is only that which we are ever, ever, even in death. So if you find yourself in, in, in a very dark or shadowy place upon death, then you want to look for the light because the light is available to you just as it is, just as it is available to the saint now. I want to recognize and acknowledge that there is this idea about the soul trap. The light is a trap. It just, if you enter the light, you are essentially entering into another birth canal to be reincarnated by another human woman. And it's just the cycle continues to go on. There is this lore that you encounter the lords of karma who who falsely represent themselves as your dearly departed loved ones or as angels in order to entrap you into reincarnation. And I've actually made a podcast about this topic with my best friend, Trisha Carr. If you want to do a search on YouTube for this, here's what I think about that, okay? We're just talking here. No, man. I am, period. I am sovereign in my space. I am the consciousness that's having this experience. Therefore, I am the consciousness that's in control of this experience. And also, I am that I am. And if I hypothetically were in a situation where I was being deceived by a false light, I am, I feel that the frequency that I hold and or the frequency that I align to, which connects me to the divine I am and to God. This gives me the discernment that I need. This gives me the discernment that I need to, to rightly understand the situation. I know that that sovereignty exists and that's not abdicated. I'm not deluded as a high frequency being all of a sudden upon death. I do not believe that. And that's just my short answer to that. I'm not worried about that. Perfect love casts out all 
fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And I don't have any fear around this, and nor do I think that you should either. I don't think it's set up that way. But again, that's a conversation for another video. Go check out that other video. We talk about this in depth. And so that was a long answer. Vaughn Craig Hughes, I think I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, the first part of my answer is that as humans, we all follow the same tract in this way. Now, there may have been other humans, for example, avatars, for example, beings like Buddha or uh, Babaji or beings like Jesus that didn't necessarily follow the same track that pass and find themselves immediately in the frequency that represents them bypassing in totality fourth dimension. They just end up in 5D or they end up in 6D. They end up wherever their frequency is a match for. But for most of us humans who are kind of just, you know, living in this human incarnation, that is our process. However, Second part of this answer. Are there different homes? Well, yes, I do believe there can be for the aspects of ourselves that are not human. And here I introduce to you the idea, truly the physics would say, the, the reality that you exist even now simultaneously across infinite dimensions and potentially across infinite universes, universes that don't even resemble this universe. You exist there. And so the process for that incarnated aspect of yourself dwelling in a landscape unlike this, yes, the process may be different. Sure. The universal architecture might be different. There might not be a 4D or a portal there. It might be something completely uh, different than what we have here. And so you said, be open to if there is death in other realities in which you exist, that process may, might be different than what we experience here. And also, I don't think that in all other realities, death is a part of life. I think for the most part, this is, this is uniquely a 3D experience. I happen to believe that there is a representation of me in every dimension in this universe. In fact, I stand in all dimensions at all times. And this is so cool because if there's a 5D me hanging out with Christ consciousness, I have access to the vantage point of that because that's me. If there's a 6D me hanging out in the domain of sacred geometry with Melchizedek and Met Metatron, there is a me there that understands the information, knowledge, and energy of this, and I can access that because that's me. But does the me there in 6D die? I don't believe so. There is no death in fifth dimensional reality. There is, however, ascension. And ascension is also another conversation, but you can move from dimension to dimension, and, and you can occupy multidimensional spaces more easily in a conscious way from those other dimensions. And I would say that you're multidimensional now, like you're 5D now, you're 60 now, you're 70 now, but we're not conscious to this due to the constraints of this particular dimensional space. And I fear I fear I've gone on too long and maybe convoluted this subject for some of you. And I apologize for that. Let me just say that that's where my head goes. That's what excites me to talk about. Um, and I believe in the infinity self. We just talked about this in the last video, this idea that there are many me's. And these me's exist all over the strata of creation. Get with it. What if I could go into meditation? And I can. What if I could go into meditation and connect with a me that's in a different universe altogether? What would I learn? What could I download? And also get hip to this jive. Those me's are presently accessing you. What do you think deja vu is? What do you think timeline switching is and why it's happening? <laughs> it's a weird, wild, wacky universe, and I love it. And Vaughn Craig Hughes, I loved your question. Thank you so very much. Now, I just want to remind everyone that we have the 2021 Intuitive Intensive. If you like talking about this stuff, get into that intensive. But also, don't think that the intensive is only this high, heady, convoluted conversation. Absolutely not. We start that intensive from the foundation. Like, let's talk about you being your I am. Let's talk about you being sovereign. 
Let's talk about you being an empowered soul in this life. Let's talk about the ecosystem of spirit and what that looks like in simplistic and understandable terms. And then we empower you to move in that ecosystem and emerge into a magical life right here in 3D. That's right. We're talking about the 2021 Intuitive Intensive. It starts January 18th, 2021. We've got a deep discount for the month of December. I promise you this program will change your life. So if you're interested in taking your spirituality to the next level, well then by golly, check out that page and look at what we're going to be doing. Look at what we're going to be teaching and listen to some of those testimonials. And I hope to see you in the program. And until next time, you better believe. that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys. There's no going back. I can't unsee all the things that I've seen. I can't unfeel all the things that I've felt. It's, it's, it's been life-changing, not just because of everything that I've learned, but everything that I've experienced. I am always so afraid of being seen. That's something that makes me want to hide, but this is just making me want to come out.